Error 404 pages are great for letting a user know that there is an error with their request and often people don't spend enough time making a good and functional one. In our HTML, we can start off by creating a container to store everything. On our page, we want the text oops to be in big letters, so we can create an h1 tag and put the text oops inside with an exclamation mark. Below that, we want to tell the user that it is an error 404 page, so we can create an h3 tag and put the text 404-page not found. Lastly, underneath that, we want to create a button that would send the user back to the home page of their site. To do that, we can make a button tag with the text go to home page inside. Now if we look at our output, we can see our main text with our h3 and our button. That is everything for the HTML, so we can create a link tag in our head and move on to our CSS. In our CSS, the first thing we are going to do is remove the default margin and padding from everything. After that, we can customize our container and inside that, we can set the display to flex, align the items to center, and justify the content to center. To bring our content all the way to the center, we will also need to set a height of 100 viewport height and a width of 100%. Everything is in the center now, but to positions our item, items in a column, we can set the flex direction to column. In the container, we can also set the font family to Gil Sans, or you can use another font you like. Now we can start customizing our H1. The first thing we can do is set the font size of 15 viewport width. We can also add a font weight of 700 and then add an exclamation mark important after that. To make the text stand out more, we can place an image inside of that. And to do that, we can set the background to URL. And to get the image, we can go to pexels.com and search for an image we like. In this case, I will search Galaxy and then we can click on, on an image we like, download it, and then drag it into our folder. With whatever we named our background image, we can fill in the brackets with that file name. To make our image go inside the text, we can set the background size to cover, and then do dash webkit, dash text, dash fill, dash color, and set that to transparent. We can no longer see the text, but if we do dash webkit, dash background, dash clip, and set it to text, followed by setting background clip to text, we see our text and the image is inside of it. Moving on to our H3, we can set the margin top to 40 pixels to space things out a little, and set the font size to 2 viewport width and the letter spacing to 5 pixels. The last thing we have to customize is our button. We can start by setting a margin of 40 pixels and removing the border by setting the border to 0 pixels. After that, we can set a background color to blue, a border radius of 20 pixels, a height of 40 pixels, and a width of 150 pixels. The last two things we can add is a color of white and the text transform to uppercase. When we go to our output, we have a responsive error 404 page. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe.